Thank you, and good morning. You know, Hugh's comments kind of crack me up a little bit about Christmas and opening presents, you know. Feels a little bit like Kris Kringle here on stage, even though my team probably chuckles whenever they ask me for money, it's more like Scrooge. Um, but no, I'm really excited. I really enjoy coming to these events and uh, every year and you know, here in China and we do them in Europe as well. And you know, engaging in and experiencing all this you know, new innovation and capabilities that are, come out through this community. And it's really a lot of fun to watch, collaborate and experience it. Today is more exciting for me because I get to deliver some of it. And I think what some of the stuff we're going to talk about today and what I'm going to be providing to you, I think is game changing for the open community. And so let's, let's get started, let's get into it. So first, just a reminder, I think everybody has seen this chart before, right? You guys all know why we started Open Power. We all saw the fact that Moore's Law was dead or declining and the you weren't seeing any longer the 2x performance every two years or 18 months and the need to be able to accelerate up and down the stack. Accelerators, software, networking, connectivity, um, storage, et cetera. And the ability to be able to do that is becoming even more important as we move forward. When you look at the explosion of data, the algorithms and artificial intelligence and their need to be able to process that more effectively. We're seeing custom hyperscalers and others that are hiring their own chip designers, developing their own accelerators and their own uh, memory controllers and their own capabilities in that stack to advance and accelerate the performance of these systems that are necessary to drive the workloads of today and especially of tomorrow. And that's only done effectively through open innovation. So this is what we've been doing with open power for the last five years has been important towards that objective, but we need to take it to the next step. And we see transition happening in the industry that justifies taking it to the next step. We're seeing this innovation happening in different ways with open hardware. We're seeing different players, different new open ISA communities come into play. And, and the effect that they're having on the industry is demonstrating the need to continue to drive an open type of computing environment and governance structure to drive that innovation. And we're taking that to the next step with power. But with that said, let me just remind everybody, we have made significant progress to date. With the 350 plus members we have in the foundation, we've had hundreds of innovations. We have over, over 40 different, different types of server solutions that have come out in the market, more than 20 different vendors that have delivered open solutions in the community, along with a lot of different work being done at every different layer of that stack. And we've delivered, we, the community, have delivered that all the way down from low end workstations like Raptor has delivered, all the way up to the top supercomputers in the world the number one and number two supercomputers at Oak Ridge and Lawrence Livermore. That was done through a community of innovation, many different players. There were over 20 involved in that, people like Mellanox and NVIDIA and Red Hat, Samsung, Seagate, Supermicro, I can go on and on. Many different players that were involved in the delivery of that through an open ecosystem. So this initiative, this foundation, this community has been very effective but as we see the industry shifting even further and quicker to open hardware environments, we know as, as a leader having an enterprise scale instruction set architecture with high levels of security and high levels of performance, we can provide that leadership to the industry with that open hardware and we're going to do that. So if you look at where the future of computing goes, we are looking at purpose built processors, right? We are looking at a different way to innovate in an open community versus your standard traditional ways to deliver hardware, okay? We're looking at heterogeneous computing being critical. And as I said, innovation up and down the stack is required to do that. The only way to effectively do that as a community is through an open environment. IBM has been leading that ever since the beginning of the open thrust in the community. 1999, I think it was, we spent a billion dollars we committed a billion dollars to Linux before anybody else was even serious about Linux. And this is only a subset of the things we've done. You're talking about the Eclipse community, developing and creating, jointly with the community, an open developer toolkit environment for being able to create software with Eclipse. We were, we were critical contributors to Kubernetes, to Docker, to OpenStack, as far as driving, helping drive those communities forward. And of course, working closely with Red Hat on the Linux kernel, 
And then, of course, the announcement with Red Hat. All those initiatives on the software side, IBM has been a leader from the beginning in driving the advancement of those critical software capabilities in an open ecosystem type of approach. We started doing that on the hardware side in 2013 with Open Power, and then in 2016 with Open Capi, in driving a much more open approach to coherent accelerator and memory interface standards. And now we're taking those things to the next level. So we're going to talk today, I'm going to talk today about what we're calling our open chip design environment. We have a number of different things that we're announcing today around this next step with open power and the open community and open CAPI. First and foremost, we're taking the power instruction set architecture. Okay? We, are we are licensing it to the Open Power Foundation so that anyone can implement on top of it royalty free with patent rights. And that's going to be done through the community. Okay? We are going to be doing it in an open governance model. That open governance model is going to be done through an open governance work group in the Open Power Foundation where it's a majority vote to enable enhancements, extensions, and implementations or new um, instruction set architecture capabilities that are added to the instruction set architecture. Very significant, that announcement, to do it through an open governance model through the community. We are taking Open CAPI and OMI, the open memory interface, and we are contributing that to the community through the Open CAPI consortium. Those are, that RTL, those reference designs, will now be available to the community. It will be contributed, it will be now be part of the community versus IBM controlled. And we are hoping over time, the objective is not just to get those to be more driven as industry standards, but to drive convergence with other standards like CXL. And we've gotten a lot of support in, in, with early discussions with a number of members of the community for that convergence approach. Very important, very powerful members who we think will be catalysts in helping us drive that convergence. Also under the Open, under the open Power ISA contribution, um, you'll hear more from Anton uh, in a couple, I think two or three presentations after mine, that we are putting a soft core out there. We're contributing a soft core that's going to make it easier for people to be able to do implementations on top of the ISA, leveraging that soft core as a tool, as a baseline that is now contributed to the community. And then last but not least, as a demonstration of the importance of us putting this into open governance principles, the Open Power Foundation is going to be moving as an entity to be part of the Linux Foundation. And it will now be part of the Linux Foundation. It will still be an entity. It will have its own board, its own decision making, but as an entity of the Linux Foundation. So this doesn't change anything here with this community. This community is still just as critical. But we're making a statement to the industry that it's going to be part of what I would consider the Linux Foundation one of the leading players in the market in the world around open governance structures and principles. Okay? This is the announcement. We, we consider this game changing. We consider this big. We have, before we made this, we have reviewed this with lots of different industry players, and we've gotten lots of endorsement. Lots of excitement, actually, out there in the industry. You can see the names on the list. We've gotten support and endorsement and, and excitement from you know, some of the leading open um, operating system vendors in the world, some of the leading server vendors in the world, leading accelerator vendors, leading um, interconnect vendors, leading hyperscalers in the world, um, some major research institutions in the world, and, you know, we didn't go to everybody out there. We went to players we thought were important. And I don't remember a single player not saying to us that, wow, this is something. This is going to make a difference in the industry. So we're really excited about what we will be doing once now we execute on this announcement. And what I'm really, what really I, I enjoy about this is, you know, as I said before, you know, IBM has demonstrated our ability to, to be leaders in the open um, community for, since the beginning, we are now, IBM is now the only processor vendor in the world that is open from 
the lowest levels of the hardware, the instruction set architecture and the firmware, all the way up through the software, the server software stack. And power is the only architecture that is open all the way from the, the lower levels, lowest levels of the hardware up through the server software stack. That's a statement of our commitment to this. And if anybody, I, I shouldn't even say this, but I will. If anybody says, well, you're opening it up and you're moving it under this and, oh, is, that, is there any decommitment from IBM? No, this is a further commitment from us. Our, our, we're out power 11, 10, power 11, power 12. Our roadmap is, is committed for the future, and we're accelerating that. But in order for, for the industry to get the benefits that they really should be getting out of the power architecture, we want to drive more innovation in the ecosystem, not just IBM, but in the entire ecosystem. And we started doing that with the foundation pretty effectively. We want to go to the next level of big with that. And that's what this announcement's all about. So let me close it by bringing up Mike Dolan, who is the, S, uh, the VP of Strategic Programs for the Linux Foundation, just to give us a couple of, a couple of minutes, if you could take us through why you think this announcement's important, both for the Linux Foundation as well as for the open source community. Yeah, I think, I think this is an exciting announcement for us. We've been working with the Open Power Foundation on the side, you know, for a long time, so we have a good working relationship. But as we look to where things are going in the industry, you're starting to see an incremental evolution from a lot of the cloud infrastructure being open source, some of the industry applications being open source. You see a number of industries gravitating towards an open development model. And while that started in open source software, and Linux was a perennial example of what you can succeed with when you get to an open infrastructure, you're looking at now evolutions of that into open hardware. Open power is one example. Chips Alliance is another example of where organizations are saying, you know, it was great that we were able to do that for source code, but can we do that for hardware? Can we do that for the instruction set architecture, the firmware, the verification and testing tooling and things around it? Can we get to a better place if we have a core plumbing that we can build on? And that's where it's not about giving away all of the intellectual property. It's about putting a core plumbing set out there that everybody can build upon and be able to build their own value-add solutions and additional things that scratch their itches or address their use cases that maybe it's not something the entire world needs, but they're allowed to adapt and evolve the architecture to where they need to go. And this is something where I think Open Power is at the forefront of that on the hardware side of things. Uh, certainly, we're seeing collaborations even beyond just, you know, the hardware to open data. Um, IBM was actually also a significant contributor to uh, community data license agreements and things where we're working on open data, we're working on open software, uh, we have open specifications and hardware that we're, or open specification standards that we've been working on. So across the various technical areas where people collaborate, we're starting to see more and more open collaboration. And I think that that's a powerful thing. If you look at a lot of these examples, it's not just Linux anymore. We now have hundreds of examples of software, specifications, hardware designs that you're all dependent upon, whether you know it or not, but you're building value-added solutions and other capabilities around it. And because you have that base layer that is open and shared, you're able to do that with a much faster time to market, you're able to do it in a much more uh, compatible, interoperable way so that things start to work together at, at a better level. And so I think it's exciting. I think we've been you know, working together for a while. Uh, so the partnership with the Linux Foundation, I think, is, is an evolution of where we were at. But um, I look forward to working with you and um, seeing where we can take this next, because I do think there's a lot more. This is, I, I think, step one for us. It's, there's a lot of steps to come in the future. And uh, we're certainly excited to see where it can go. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate Thank it. You. All right, folks. Thank you, Mike. Now that the presents are unwrapped from under the tree, I hope you guys are as excited as we are, and we really look forward. Now the announcement's out. Now the hard work is going forward, and we look forward to working with everybody on that. Thank you.